the Jesus uh, experience if he wants. I could go into that, but I'll let you guide it however you want. <laughs> no, no, he's going to be selling you essential oils soon, love and light unicorns. Like, you know what I mean? You've got to take it slow here. I can't lose my whole doom around. No, but she didn't, she didn't tell the Jesus experience yet. It was the whole thing, oh, right? Yeah, the whole thing. Well, it's what the people want. Give the people, Larry, you're already taking, you're winning. It's, it's fine. I surrender. Jesus, <laughs> Heidi, take the wheel. What do we want to do? You want to tell the Jesus experience? Yes, of course. That's my favorite. Yeah. To talk All right. About. I'm letting my phone go. I'm letting it drop on my lap. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the interesting part of uh, the whole, uh, the secret war book when I was trying to. I get that book out and I was like doing some editing here and there and, and you know, four years in the process, even though it was written in two months and, and I'm like, uh, you know, just sitting on it. And I had a chapter in that book where I bashed the idea that Jesus was popping around in people's tree trunk or a piece of toast because at the time it, everybody was saying, ah, you know, here's a, here's Jesus in, in, in a smear on a window or something, you know, it, it was just ridiculous. Um, so I was, I was a big skeptic uh, of such things and I had seen angelic beings. I've been to this crystal city place, uh, since I was a kid and still go back and forth and, uh, just experience different beings. I, I've seen so many alien beings. I lost count and same with different craft and them responding and coming down, you know, um, it's just so many things. So I'm like Jesus around, like yeah, I believed in God, and I believe Jesus existed, but more as a historical figure who's supposed to come back one day, and we're supposed to say our prayers, uh, you know, in his name. I I was very superficial. I was raised Methodist, where you essentially uh, have a campfire, and somebody just so happens to say the name Jesus. It's really laid back. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't in it, you know, and uh, I had a lot of friends that were Catholic and very uh, Pentecostal, very strict in their religious beliefs. And uh, I would poke fun and say, yep, you're going to church? Oh, say a prayer for me because I'd probably start on fire if I stepped in. Because um, I believed in God, but because I was into the topic of aliens and UFOs, they assumed I was a devil worshiper. So I was just teasing. But uh, so it, it, it was, that's where I was at when uh, I, I, I went to work early in the morning and and I came back to my, my shared apartment with my college roommate, and I told her to turn her TV down. I'm going to take a quick nap and then go to class. <laughs> so I worked at 5 in the morning to uh, 12 noon, you know. And uh, I go to lay down on my bed to take my quick nap. And, you know, you put swing your feet up and you fix your pillows and, and whatnot. And I, did, I, I swung my legs up, and I missed the bed. I hit the floor so hard, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how did I, how did I do that? I was like, oh my gosh. I'm getting up from the ground, and I'm like, where am I? I wasn't in my room anymore. And um, I was like, okay, did I hit my head? You know, like, what? what is this, you know? And I'm standing on the front uh, cement porch of my parents' home, and I am doing my darned us to try to understand how I got there. Um, and I did plan to meet with a family friend named Quincy to my, at my parents' home. And, and I am like, Heidi, you were going to come here. You know, you just don't remember how you got here. And I'm like, absolutely not making sense to myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's it, Heidi. You're just going to come here. And you, know, you hit the floor and you just don't remember how you got here. And I'm looking around and my parents have kind of a long driveway. And I look down the driveway and I see this man coming and I'm like, Oh yeah, you're right. There goes Quincy. Now, he, you know, this is, he, you did come to your parents to, to meet up with him and it, it didn't take long. He's walking. It's a short distance up that driveway and this huge, Oh, I get goosebumps. Uh, feeling of recognition immediately just smacked me. And I'm like, Oh, you know, and it just, Calmed my face like this is not happening this is not happening and and almost just so quickly he was right in front of me and I'm palming my face and I'm like this is not happening and I'm hitting my leg I'm like hey you're here you are really here I'm like I just I, this is this is crazy and this man says hello 
as if he's going to talk about the weather or something. And this is real friendly. And I'm palming my face still. I'm like, hello, you know, like. And he said, do you know who I am? If you knew who I was, you would not hesitate to say it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's making me, you know, call my call my bluff, you know, and I'm pulling my, my hands away from my face and, and I'm stuttering. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you're, you're, you're Jesus. And he said, yes, I am. And, and as I pulled my hands away, uh, ugh, I don't speak Spanish. First off, I took six years of German. I, I'm not Spanish. <laughs> I don't know why I called him Jesus. Um, as I pulled my hands away from my face and looked up at him, here's this beautiful man with um, off-white robes just uh, draping off from him. And I could see shoulder-length hair and very, very, very bright light coming from behind his head that 100% shadowed his face. And he started speaking about his life and how there was so much of what he was aiming to do and how so much needed to be done yet. And as he's talking, like, I'm hearing words, but I'm getting images and emotions uh, more than anything. But I am still myself freaking out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, this, is, this is Jesus. I'm, like, hitting my leg. I'm pinching it. I'm like, you are here. You are really here. And I'm like, I, I'm... And I'm just like, just can't understand where, you know, what, how, how's this possible? And then I'm touching the ground, the cement next, it, next to me. And that's when it hit me. I'm on my knees. I didn't even remember falling to my knees. And, um, and at that element really just struck me. Like I fell to my knees and the love that this man gave off and he got quiet as I'm looking at the ground at the cement and I'm touching it as if he knows, like, I'm not paying attention because I'm a little freaked out right now. And, uh, and, and I look up to him and I stutter again. And I said, well, 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 what do you want me to do? You know? And he said, first, you need to show us some things. And I'm like, you know, it's like helping me to stand up. I'm like us. And I'm looking around. I'm like, nobody's here but me and him I'm like oh he's talking about his dad <laughs> and he said you need to finish writing your book and that was the secret war book I was editing it was written but I was editing and uh, I had bashed him really bad in it um <laughs> he's like do not worry what other people say know that I'll be there to give you the words and and he started to tell me about something else. And I knew this part. I wasn't supposed to hear it. I could see his lips moving. This is strange. I didn't see his face. But I got little parts. Right? And I could see his lips moving. And it was as if there was a glass. Uh, a pane of glass between us. Like, I hear nothing. I hear nothing. And then it moves away. And I... I and. Uh, all of a sudden I can hear things again and I'm like and I know he has to leave and I'm like uh think of something quick Heidi ask him something ask him anything and I'm like um 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 and I'm like and I ask him a really peculiar question that honestly felt like it came from the soul of me that knew something to ask because I didn't know what to ask him and I asked him what's my real name and he laughed lightly. I mean, it's kind of that laughter, man. I, I just, uh, it was beautiful. And, uh, and he, as he's fading away, he said, I love you very much, Ilea. And I'm like, I, I know how my visions can go where I, I will lose parts of it if I don't repeat it. And I'm like, Ilea, Ilea, I got to remember Ilea. And, I get pulled back into my body and I didn't hit the floor. I was on that bed. I was like, but <clears throat> I didn't want to move because the love was so intense. It just tickled you from the inside out. And you, I, I, I could still feel it on me. 
and I didn't want to, I just didn't want to let it go. And, um, you know, and people, people ask me, did you, did you test the spirit? Do you know it was him? I'm like, like, uh, I could have been blind and seen it was him because every cell in my, my, my body screamed his name. I mean, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And whew, it, it just overwhelmed me. And, um, that was the first of several encounters I had with him. But after that first one, all I could tell people was, hey, are you in church? You keep going. Cause Jesus is no joke, you know? And I, I couldn't stop saying, wow, Jesus is no joke. And that's why I named my book, Jesus is no joke. Um, and it, it tells of uh, four encounters with Christ in there. And um, I'm, I'm writing a, a bit about my other encounters with him in this, uh, in a new book. So, but Heidi, uh, that, Heidi, can I just tell you that I just got a message from Jesus and you know, he loves everything he just heard, but he's, he is a little bit perturbed about the title. And I know why he's not saying, but I know why. It's because he really is quite the comedian, and you and I both know that, probably. Um, and he's a little, you know, disturbed about Jesus is no joke, because he kind of would like to think of himself as a funny guy as well. So. <laughs> well, I I wrote uh, I wrote it really. Uh, I didn't want it to be fluff. You know, there's so many books out there with clouds and a sunshine. I have a, a I have a hand symbol on the cover of my book. You know, I wanted it to be whimsical. I wanted it to be casual. And uh, you know, I was really fortunate when I put that book out. It, it sat for number one for eight months in the near death experience category uh, on Amazon. I I just. Uh, I just wanted to be painfully honest about what it was and, and how I, I understood faith to be and, and to have an encounter that you would never have expected, even though I've experienced a lot of things. I, I And I don't consider myself a psychic or a guru, just um, I understood to use myself as a flawed human being in order to hopefully paint a clear picture of what's going on. And he changed everything. He changed everything. Oh my God, that's a great story. And yes, I mean, it is a perfect title because as you were describing before this happened, you kind of thought of it as a, the whole thing as a joke, you know, especially with the toast and everything, for God's sakes. But uh, then you have this holy smokes real experience and you, you can really hear it, Heidi, in your voice. It comes through so clearly. I had that same, not not quite as, well, yeah, it was the Holy Smokes, um, and yes, I never saw him, um, and oh, I sure felt him, and he was absolutely delightful to be in the presence of, it was unbelievable, um, he asked me how even, like, <laughs> how long, how much, what percentage of my day, I, or my life, or my day, I guess it was, that he would like me to be in and I, he said because if you don't say anything it's just going to be 100 percent. so <laughs> and i i just felt that love for him that um and it 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 is uh now this was this whole experience was was induced by being on on crystal math 25 years ago for two years lost, losing everything that i owned and everything uh everything that I gave up, you know, my whole life, just because I liked, liked that feeling so much. And it was just a, an amazing journey into the woods. And yes, it was uh, dark. I had uh, the uh, harassing, uh, I didn't understand it. I, I, you know, none of this should have been real. I, I shouldn't be hearing voices. At first, I thought it was like my upstairs neighbor. Then I thought it was some kind of technology. And then I thought it was, okay, and God darn it, maybe it's a telepathic person, a secret, you know, that's harassing people who are on meth because they're easier to connect to or something. And uh, it just went through all this negative, and it, the, it went on for a long time and it followed me. You know, I ended up in a motel room and um, and I ended up trying to placate this son of a bitch because I wanted him to stop harassing me. And uh, he, at that point, is when it shifted into 
the Jesus thing. And I, I can't describe exactly, I don't want to go into too many details, but, oh, um, yeah, <laughs> I felt, I do feel that he, the experience is, okay, I'll just relate a couple of things, that there was one, a few things that he taught me. Uh, first of all, that I was okay the way I was, um, and that I didn't have to pretend to be anything. Um, and that lying to yourself is not good, and lying to others is not good. And that's pretty much it. And so I tried to make those corrections. And the, it was pr pretty much easy from then on to be with him. And, and well, I should also mention that he, uh, and this is why I have to laugh, because me. <laughs> Maybe he was a little harder on me or something because uh, I had the exact same experience as you when, when I realized it was him. I said, what do you want me to do? I, I, I will do anything because you are the, the you, holy smokes, I'm with Jesus. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm at your service. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. And I was on the second floor of a motel room. He told me to go, I want you to walk out your door. I walked out my door. I want you to walk down the steps. I walked down the steps. Walk along the, that row of, of doors on the first floor. I started walking, passing door after door. Stop here. Okay. And I was already starting to catch on that this was a trick. And he goes, I want you to put your key in the door. It's going to unlock. I, I mean, I, that was the implication. I put my key in the door. It didn't unlock. And immediately I felt so foolish. And I went back up to my room and I was just like, holy shit, man. I just, oh, what the hell? What am I doing? And I sat for a moment and then he was with me again. And he goes, I'm not looking for someone to command to do what I want them to do. You know, I'm not looking for a soldier. I'm just looking for for you. I'm just here for you. I, I want to be with you. I, I, I'm making up words now because I don't even know what he, what he really said to me at that point. But it's just got, that was my introduction to him. And I realized then, okay, all right, so I'm not, I'm not to be your slave. All right, so the, how do I adjust? How do I be with you? Because you're so great. And, it, and, the, and as I got more and more used to it, I guess something happened and, and it was this. That I was laying there and I was kind of like not thinking about anything in particular. And all of a sudden, a memory came to me of when I was 11 years old. And it was nothing, nothing uh, eventful, really. It was just that we were visiting. My parents had me visiting my cousins uh, in this town that I was not familiar with. And there were people out there, kids out there in the street that were tough, mean and we were warned, you know, that they were toughies, but we wanted to go out and kind of play with them, and I saw that one of them was really fat, and he was kind of in the middle of the street, and he, he was maybe a little older, and so I, I, I thought of how to placate them, by maybe put, maybe go up to him and put my hand on his belly, and I said, this man has the belly of God, so that he would not feel so bad about being fat, and, you know, I guess that was what was on my mind. And that's the whole story right there. So it wasn't, nothing happened. And there was, you know, and that was the whole, why would I remember that? I completely forgot about it forever. And then I'm laying on my bed and all of a sudden with Jesus in my feeling like he's still around me, I just gotten over that terribly embarrassing thing. And that thought pops in my mind, and I realize now that he picked that one out of my mind, out of my memories, to show me. Because I had fallen, oh, I left out this part, was when I realized he, he was there, I was thinking, oh my God, you know about this, you know about that, you know about, oh. I'm just, you know, I felt really, like, exposed, and, and so... This was, look how Jesus acts. This is what he did, is he went through my memories and picked out a memory of me that I would never have remembered. And just to say, I, I liked this little vignette in your life. I liked what you said to him. 
And I was just like so touched by that. And I knew it was him. So the rest of the story is less eventful. And I, you know, I, I ended up quitting a meth and, and I'm, I've never touched anything like it again. But, but I can, I just wanted to relate that to you, Heidi, because I, 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 I resonate with, with everything that you described. He is, he was so funny at times and he, he was collaborative. And that was the, I, I'm going to land on this. One of the things he taught me was that the whole experience was a collaboration, except for the funniest, the funniest moments. And those were, uh, and I, I looked to him at one of those moments and I said, collaboration, really? And he goes, well, actually, that was, that was all me that time. <laughs> so, okay, let's land on that. And uh, thanks, Heidi, for sharing your story. Oh, I loved it. I loved yours. That was awesome. That was, that was so, that sounded a lot like him. Having a sense of humor, it, it let me know he definitely had a sense of humor uh, when he laughed at me. I, I was like, ha! I wasn't insulted either. It was, it was a beautiful laugh. I'm like, you know, people are so afraid of him. And, and he laughed at me with this really peculiar question uh i gave him so i i, I appreciate you sharing um i i feel more than fortunate um blessed to have had the experience i did um and and have had several now but it's uh wow it's it, when you least expect it and something i forgot to mention um i rewrote that chapter where i blasted him <laughs> I had to. I absolutely do that because um, I, I I felt bad, and instead I I put in my Jesus encounter and in in the Secret World book about aliens and shadow people, and so many people wrote me saying, "How did that fit in?" You know what? That seemed to be out of out of nowhere, and I'm like, "It was." <laughs> I didn't see it coming either, but I had tore him apart for being real, and and he showed up, and everybody's like, "Well, why would he show up to you?" I'm like. Well, why wouldn't he show up to anybody? You know, I, I feel we all have equal opportunity. But I think he saw I was a decent person about to make a horrible mistake. Because little did I know how influential this book was about to be in introducing two phenomena, Shadow People Hat Man, to the world, you know. And here I was going to bash the, the number one weapon against these things, you know. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, Ulrich, where were we going from here? Is it, we uh, had Crumbopulous. I, I, we had Crumbopulous. I don't know if your hand is still up, and then it would be Parsi and then Great Hater. Uh, Crumbo, do you do you still have your question? I don't want to skip over you. No, thank you. Uh, we kind of came full circle, so it was uh, it was perfect. I, I don't know. I can I can just say my thought though is we were talking about you know. Um, jesus yahweh and even like this source and i don't think like larry for example to have reverence for jesus and also recognize the power that there is within us is not like blasphemous or anything like that i actually think it's the opposite and i would ask you like isn't that the reason why jesus came to earth is to prove that we have the connection with this greater higher being um so there's a reason why we're targeted and it's because we hold power over you know these negative entities especially when we conspire against them um i almost think that our souls are literal like beacons of light and the brighter we shine you know the further away they can see us we're attracting more and more shit here um so I, I, I just think let's all focus on connecting with the source, the all-powerful, and that doesn't mean that we can't have reverence for Yahweh or Jesus or Muhammad or whatever you want to believe. I love it. Heidi, thank you so much for sharing your stories. That's awesome. Yeah, th thank you, Heidi. And I would like, in, if, in case anybody wants an example of blasphemy, I would like to direct your attention toward the nest the very top the very first slide until larry became a doomer and he officially became a doomer and he, tomorrow morning fringe he's going to try to slip away he's, he's going to try to go back to the love and light but we're 
today we're winning, okay? If you want to see what blasphemy is, this was Larry's vision of the apocalypse. It was him riding a unicorn, being beamed into a rainbow UFO. Um, and uh, this is not what the pole shift looks like, but it is still a beautiful piece of art. Um, RC, I dis- you've been I dis- extremely patient. I disavow any, yeah, I disavow any participation in that in, creation. In in what in the in the rainbows? Do you not like unicorns? Yeah, no, I, what is wrong? With someone this? created that, <laughs> thinking I would like it. I don't know who. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may or may not have commissioned the artwork. I definitely didn't create it. <laughs> um, but it is beautiful. What is wrong with with this vision? Um, and I'm sorry. Go go ahead, Parsi. <laughs> Hey, thanks. I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation so far. I can't believe Larry's come over to the dark side, but I'm so happy to see everyone as yes, one cohesive wait. unit, I, uh, love and light, boom and boom, all together. That's fantastic. Um, Heidi, uh, I'll keep it short. I don't want to ramble on. I want to give other people time to speak, but I'm a lifelong experiencer as well. I've had up-close sightings of craft with my twin brother. I have continued contact with orbs um, and craft as if as latest as yesterday, I was on a space with uh, another fantastic experiencer who's here, Christian Carroll, who started a space for experiencers, uh, and we manifested the phenomenon on a live space. Uh, me being in Melbourne, Australia, a- able to film the phenomenon, and he able to see it in, uh, I think it's South Carolina, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I have experienced both sides of the phenomenon, um, the negative side and the positive side as well. Um, and I know about this war that's going on apparently in the astral realm between negative and positive factions. So uh, I'll keep it short. I, I found out about a past life, uh, as a Lyran and a reptilian, um, that reptilian attachment followed me for a little while and I was trying to get rid of it. Uh, when I would close my eyes, I would see the beings like you were just saying earlier. I would see their eyes. I would see their face. They would speak to me. I would draw out the, the face of the being. I would speak like the being. I know their agenda. Um, but then in order to get rid of that reptilian attachment, I started meditating to these uh, meditations by Joe Dispenza. Started doing walk for the world meditations that he had um, released in November last year. And that brought the phenomenon full force back into my life. So the orbs started appearing around Orion's belt, um, the craft, blue tic-tac, um, orange orbs with the faces of greys in it, uh, gray, gray orbs in my house, so they would look like the face of a gray and they'd morph into a circular orb, all this crazy stuff that's happening. And then I did a second regression with Mary Rodwell um, maybe a couple of months ago, and in that regression I was shown uh, the, the true beings that are supposedly protecting me from the reptilian influence, um, and they call themselves the Keeper of Souls. Uh, They have the face of an owl and a body of a man in golden armor. Um, And they actually took me to see God. Um, So I know that this phenomenon isn't all about nuts and bolts. It actually boils down to um, consciousness. So I'd really be interested in speaking to you about my experiences at a later stage. Now I'm trying to put my orb videos up on X, but the, the, the compression is really bad. So I just started a small YouTube channel just to spread that awareness. But do you have any um, any thoughts on this? Um, are you aware of a war that's going on between um, these supposed beings in the astral realm against reptilians and greys? Uh, my first book was called The Secret War. It was based on the entire uh, notion of this division between positive and negative beings. Um, ones being shadow people, hat man phenomena, uh, abusive greys, abusive reptilians, uh, anything that sits on that side of the fence and uh, what the ultimate goal is. And I came at this as a person that was heavily involved in the whole UFO alien conversation and uh, who grew up in a haunted house and then was met with uh, these shadow beings and recollecting uh, my memories of, of uh, being connected with them and having so many different uh, elements, the, the, the craft that would come when I called. I mean, not 
not small craft. I mean, just mind blowing. I, I think uh, the most, uh, the largest and, and most abrupt one was in, a, in front of a group of friends that I, I couldn't believe it, um, that it would come as quick as it, as it did. Um, we were somewhere up in Massachusetts looking up at the night sky, just to mention briefly. Um, and there's dozens of craft in the sky, and they are shooting at each other. It was the craziest thing. I, I'm like, are we seeing this? And, and so I said out loud, I said, well, I've never seen a triangular-shaped craft, so if one of you guys have a, a moment, I sure would love the opportunity to see you. You could count to three. And one dropped out of the sky so fast and so direct down to the ground, we all hit the dirt, literally, on all fours, on our bellies. And this craft that was probably three stories off the ground was over my head, turning to the left, turning to the right. You want to see this side, Heidi? How about this side? Here's another angle for you, you know, and. It, it, my friend that wasn't too far from me hit me with saying, you asked for this to happen? Make it go away! <laughs> you know, I'm like, and I was like, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can go now. And then whoosh! Went straight up back to the battle. Um, so yeah. Um, I've experienced a lot of different things. Having orbs respond uh, sit on my head super large, um, just the, just so many different things. Um, and, and it's like, you wonder, it's like, well, and again, I don't propose to be a psychic, a guru, an antenna or anything like that. Um, I knew when I came to be born here and agreed to be here that, uh, one of the things was not to stand out, but to be as everybody else and to share in the experiences and be painfully honest about it. And uh, serve as an example if I had to, and put everything I am into it. So um, there's there's a lot that uh, goes into sticking true to this, and and uh, you know, I'm trying to do my best to help others. And I hope that we all do the same in helping others to open up our hearts and minds to the truth of things. Um, sorry if I, I don't know if I, I hope I answered your question in the midst of all of that. <laughs> no, thank you very much for that because um, we've been experiencing a lot of divisiveness here on X. With um, it's either the very love and light crowd and this, or it's the doom and gloom. But this coming together of the the narratives or just people coming together is really heartening to see. And um, credit goes out to Fringe, Larry, uh, Daddy Doomer, I mean, Ulrich, I mean, you've changed your name now with all the nappies and stuff. Uh, and also to Christian, who's listening in the space below. Um, Christian started a space just maybe three weeks ago. I don't, I don't know how it started up by some bizarre synchronicity for experiencers. Um, and... It just, it's taken off like fire, so if you have time, we would really appreciate you can come on the space and maybe give us a little bit of your wisdom and guidance. Uh, but thank you very much for that. I would appreciate if we can be in touch some way. I, I can't DM you for some reason, but I'd love to be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Parsi. Um, before we get to Great Hater, Heidi, I wanted to get to an incident that I think you spoke about last time, um, and it had something to do with calf saying that the good guys can get shot down. And I'm not sure if that was related to Roswell or not, but that the good guys can get shot down and that, and there was some, something else you said about him trying to rescue some of his friends from hell or something crazy like that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, I was talking um, to him in regards to the Roswell celebration, you know, I forget how many years it was. And, uh, I was like, oh, gosh, I hope to be able to go in for the celebration. And he's like, what's there to celebrate? I lost my friends. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, we f forget the tragedy of death occurred there. You know, uh, these beings died. And, and then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I, I didn't even didn't even think of that. So I apologize. And I said, but they're with you now, you know, because I know you're, very spiritually aware and, and whatnot. And he's like, no, um, we didn't get there in time to retrieve their souls. That when 
one of them dies here on the planet, uh, they have to abide by the rules of that planet, and their soul was in, in, was captured, essentially, and uh, by these dark beings, uh, shadow beings, and um, it was a, a depressing time, honestly, to, to hear that, uh, that, that they were stuck that way. Um, and I'm like, there's no rescue, and like, attempts are being made, and it was just, it was a really, really sad situation.